Batman 89, Shadows. Based on the comic written by Sam Hamm, with art by Joe Quinones, Leonardo Ito, and Clayton Cowles. Adapted by Ben Wan. Harvey lost consciousness, but he began seeing a glimpse of different visions. Visions of his hopes and dreams coming true, starting with him carrying Drake out of the building. I had you figured all wrong. Thanks for saving my life, Mr. Din. The governor announced today that he will not seek re-election. Speculation now centers on Gotham D.A. Harvey Dent, who came to national attention when he risked his life to save a young man in Birdsong. I couldn't wait until the weekend to see you, Governor Dent. But as the visions faded, he heard another voice, the familiar sound of his friend, Bruce Wayne. Cover your face. Don't breathe it in. That's car battery acid. As Harvey came to, he saw that Bruce and Drake were dragging him out of the building. We've got about five seconds before this place goes up. Bruce and Drake got Harvey out just as the garage exploded. Dusting themselves off, Bruce and Drake got up, recovering. Good job. Nice work. Thanks. Thanks. Regaining strength, Harvey tried to get up. Barbara, <laughs> have to make a speech. As he stood, the crowd was horrified by what they saw. Oh my gosh. Harvey! Oh, Harvey, no. Barbara, there's something wrong with my face. Half of Harvey's face had been burned from the acid in the garage. Harvey. As Harvey collapsed, the paramedics arrived and put him in a stretcher. Before she joined them in the ambulance, Barbara thanked Bruce. Thank you for saving him. I'll never forget it. We'll need you. Bruce turned away to see Drake talking to Mr. Otis and the others. I was on the roof when the fire broke out, feeding my birds. I, I think I saw the dudes that did it, though. They were running up the street, turning the corner. Wait, could you identify them? Don't know. I was way high up. But I had a real clear look at the street. Bruce stopped his tracks, noticing Drake eyeing him. If Drake had seen him on the street, then he had seen Bruce with Cap. Cops just found a few suspects in a dumpster. Somebody roughed them up pretty good. Bruce looked up at the roof nearby as the familiar figure of Catwoman gave him a flirty wave before disappearing into the night. Bruce wondered why she had decided to show herself after all this time, and what she was up to. Later that night in the hospital, Harvey Dent lay in bed with bandages over his face. He then heard a voice. His voice. Harvey. Harvey. What? Who? I'm you, Harvey. But not in this world. The other world. The one you gotta peek at. See, whenever an event has two possible outcomes, the universe splits. Both things happen in separate branches of reality. In my world, I saved Drake. I'm a hero. And now I'm running for governor. In my world, all your dreams are coming true. Whatever can happen does happen somewhere. Think of the power and the choices you make. You can literally split the universe in two. With something as simple as the toss of a coin. The vision of his other self showed the coin before fading away as Barbara came back into the room. I'm back, darling. Honey, I need my coin. Of course. I've been taking good care of it. It's the reason we're engaged. 
Do you have a nail file? Sure. Here. Why? Harvey! Harvey had started using the file to add marks on one side of the coin. This coin has no power. I'm fixing it. You need two possible outcomes. Yes. No. Good. Bad. Black. White. She loves me. She loves me not. Harvey, no. You know I love you. It doesn't matter what the- She loves me. That turned out nicely. This universe works for me. But after a day went by in Harvey's recovery, his behavior became more erratic. Barbara turned to Bruce Wayne for help in her next visit. The people are marching for me in the streets, Bruce. They need me. I have to- Darling, don't worry about that now. We have to make a decision. Bruce, tell him. There's a team of plastic surgeons. Best in the world. But it would mean flying you to Switzerland. Switzerland? Stay or go. Stay or... Where's my coin? Your coin? Harvey, this is one of the most important decisions we'll make in our entire lives. We can't leave it up to a coin. I died, Barbara. I died in the garage fire. I died in the alley where the punk stole your purse. But for some reason, this universe is keeping me alive. Stay or go. Stay. I'm sorry, go. Bruce. I don't know what's gotten into him. Stay. Keep talking to him, Barbara. Go. We need Stay Harvey Dent back. Or go. Stay. Or go. As Barbara escorted Bruce out, Harvey caught the coin. It had landed on the scarred side. That night, as an orderly was making his rounds, an IV pole struck him on the side of the head, knocking him down. Harvey stood over him and took his key card to enable him to leave. As he did so, he began to remove the bandages and look in the reflection. Staring back at him, he saw that the other side of his face had acid scars. His lips had peeled back, revealing his teeth, and the voice in the reflection suddenly talked back in a voice he didn't recognize. What are you gawking at, pretty boy? Across town at the Gotham City Police Headquarters, Barbara Gordon received an odd email. Who robbed Lincoln Savings and Loan? Lincoln Savings and Loan? Who sent this? From dirty old Bastet. Bastet. Like the cat god? Harvey's, uh, disappeared, Barbara. That's impossible. I know. But I just heard the doorman at your building saw a man who looked like dead. Had a key. He, uh, let himself in, was trying to cover his face. What? Don't worry. I got guys heading over there now. At Barbara's apartment, Harvey Dent looked into his personal laptop. Just like his fiance, he had received a cryptic email as well with information on the bank heist that Batman had foiled. Lincoln Savings and Loan robbed itself? Hey. Hey! Hello! Anyone in here? With lightning speed, Harvey took Barbara's files and fled. The police chased after him. Harvey headed down into the subway, with a new voice in his head guiding him towards a hiding spot. The cops soon lost Harvey, who looked around, recognizing an abandoned station that he had remembered as a kid. One side clean, the other run down and dirty. Don't feel bad, Harvey. A week from now, we'll have everything we need to help our friends and destroy our enemies. And then, we'll both be happy.
As Harvey Dent was making plans, Drake Winston visited Bruce at Wayne Manor to talk about the criminals who had set fire to the royal garage. Listen, Mr. Wayne, you saw those arsonists. You can identify them. They go to jail, people get justice. I can't. I made a sworn statement to the police. But you were lying. You put on a mask, chased them around the corner and beat them. Look, kid, that's not what happened. Mr. Wayne, please. There's too much at stake. I think I understand your problem here, but you have to tell me the truth. All right, all right. I, I, I did go around the corner, okay? And what I saw was Catwoman. Catwoman beat those men. <laughs> Catwoman did it? Oh, man, you're killing me. Catwoman? Catwoman's an urban legend, man. We both know who did it, and we both know why you can't admit it. Go home, kid. Mm, suits me. But first, I brought you a present. Battery acid. Same stuff that took off Dent's face. Hope it wouldn't come to this, but if you don't tell me the truth, then I'm just gonna have to. As Drake twisted the cap off the vial, Bruce tackled him, flipping him into the bookcase. Drake got up and charged at Bruce. Bruce grabbed the table nearby and hit Drake with it, causing it to break in half. Drake fell back, but not before throwing the vial. It splashed on Bruce, who winced at first, until he felt his face. Relax, you're fine. It's just water, Batman. Freeze! Alfred had barged into the room, wielding a taser. Alfred, help Mr. Winston up. Ah, uh, sir. It's okay, Mr. Alfred. He owed me one from the fire escape. Bruce looked at Drake, remembering the vigilante who had attacked him as Batman. Now he knew who was behind the mask. How did you know? Back at the garage when you were making that speech to Dent and the council, you knew the little girl's name, Nasha. So, why didn't you turn me in? I was gone now, but you ran into that burning building to save Mr. Dent, so I figured you want to make amends. See, terrorizing bad guys, it's fine, I get it, but it's a dead end. You gotta inspire people to stand up on their own, to make the kind of world they want to live in. But we can talk philosophy all night. I really just want to see the car. Bruce led Drake down the stairs into the Batcave where he saw the giant Lincoln's head penny. Close to it was the Batmobile. Man, how much did this place cost you? It was here before. I just fixed it up a little. Oh my goodness! Drake had his eyes set on a very different vehicle close to the Batmobile. One that looked like a prototype motorcycle. She's new. Needs a couple of tweaks. Okay, Mr. Wayne. I can't ask you to write yourself out. You've got too much to lose. I understand that now. But with all these gangs on the street, this town's gonna boil over. Unless somebody keeps the lid on. Well... <laughs> I'm gonna need a helper. Bruce let himself smirk. A partnership was formed. One night later, a member of the Joker gang found himself tied up, held hostage by Harvey Dent. I, I want my lawyer present. Lawyer? <laughs> Please. If you haven't figured it out yet, I'm not actually here in my official capacity as district attorney. Harvey looked down at his coin. It had the scarred side up. Instead, think of me as a prospective employer. To put it simply, I need your clown crew.
Later, Barbara Gordon came home from work to find her father, Commissioner Gordon, in her apartment. Barbara, I need to know if he's contacted you in any way. Of course not. I'm a cop, Dad. I would have reported it. I want him brought in. He needs help. Did Harvey say anything to you about Lincoln's savings and loan? The files he stole were... Stole? Last I checked, he was still the duly elected DA. Fair enough. I... Tried and convicted already. That's how we do it in Gotham. No thought for the good in his heart or the suffering Barbara, he's... Barbara, listen. Everything you said about me was right. I chose expediency over principle. I let you down. I let everyone down. I've handed in my resignation. Effective Monday. I truly hope things work out for you and Harvey. There are never enough idealists in our line of work. The job chews them up and spits them out. But maybe you'll be different. It was the proudest day of my life when you joined the force. I just wish I'd lived up to your opinion of me. Before Barbara could react, her father left. As she was about to follow, she noticed a note left hidden under her newspaper. It was from Harvey. Darling, the park, our spot, 11 p.m. Thursday. If I'm not there, it means I'm dead. I love you, Harvey. An hour later, the AA line in downtown Gotham suddenly crashed into rubble. An alert came from within the back computer. Batman was out on patrol and radioed in. What have you got for me, Alfred? Explosion, sir. Four subway tunnels collapsed from causes as yet undetermined. I should note that all four sites are roughly equidistant from police headquarters. Bad son. Next to Batman on a rooftop was Drake Winston, clad in an upgraded suit of armor with an R still on his chest. We may need the cycle. I thought you said the cycle wasn't ready. You're not ready. I'm not going to get you killed. Alfred! We need the cycle! Yes, Mr. Winston. Emerging from its cocoon in the Batcave came the Bat Cycle. It started up and headed out. Over in Gotham, Jerome Otis led the Burnside community in a march to honor Harvey Dent. Gunshots suddenly rang out. Everyone ducked for cover as the Joker gang shot sniper rifles from above, causing panic and distracting the Gotham City Police Department. Through the chaos, the gang ran into the building and Mr. Otis saw their leader. Harvey? Harvey Dent now was wearing a suit that was black on one side and white with pinstripes on the other, but he wasn't calling himself Harvey anymore. From now on, he was adopting the name Two-Face. We're in, gentlemen. Spread out. If you need me, I'll be in the evidence room. The Joker gang made their way to the rooftop of police headquarters, where Commissioner Gordon was shining the bat signal for help. Hey, Pappy, waiting for a bad boy to come and save you? <clears throat> Annette shot out a close over one gang member. The other criminal turned as Batman arrived, punching him. He landed right on the bat signal, out cold. Nice to see you, Batman. What's this about? The loot from the Lincoln Savings job. It's still down in the evidence room. We've also got a sniper or two across the street. Batman spoke into his wrist communicator. You picking this up? I'll see what I can do about that. Who are you talking to? My intern. Let's get you to safety. With all due respect, I'm on the job till Monday. This is still my turf. There's a long way down and a short way down. 
After a moment's hesitation, Gordon grabbed onto Batman, who used his cape glider to bring them to the ground. Across the street, a Joker sniper had looked out for victims to target when Drake crashed through the window behind him and knocked him. Then he went off to find the next sniper. Back in the GCPD evidence room, Two-Face wheeled out the stolen $31 million in cash from Lincoln Savings and Loan. Time's up. Move out. Hey, hey scumbag. Into the line for you. Detective Bullock fired at Two-Face, who took cover before firing back, hitting the detective in the side. Enough dawdling. Grab your gear and hold it right there, Harvey. Two-Face turned to see Commissioner Gordon pointing his firearm at him. Next to him stood Batman, who had frozen. Under the cowl, Bruce was shocked at what his friend had become. Drop the weapon, Harvey. Well, well, well. A boy and his thug. I was half hoping you'd show up. I always knew you were ambitious, but this is downright unconscionable. Batman took aim at Two-Face. From his forearm was a dark gun that would shoot out a tranquilizer. You know what they say. Cops and criminals cut from the same cloth. Two-Face then swung the remote control battering that Barbara had given him, hitting Batman, who fired the tranquilizer dart hitting Commissioner Gordon in the neck. Two-Face caught the battering as Batman looked on in horror. Somehow I knew this would come in handy. Now listen closely, Batman. We're going to back out quietly. We're taking our loot, and we're taking Gordon. Detective Bullock there is dying. Make any move to follow us. Gordon dies. Batman simply glared back. He knew what choice he'd have to make. Outside police headquarters, Batman carried out the wounded bullet for the paramedics, but the police immediately pointed their guns at him. Before they could fire, a grappling hook shot out across the police line, then tightened, causing all the cops to fall back. Drake drove the bat cycle up to Batman. Go. If you feel like I'm not ready yet, you can walk. Go. Drake took off with Batman. Eventually, they made it to the Batcave. Alfred, have we picked up a signal yet? Uh, nothing so far, sir. Signal? From what? Knockout dart. I was aiming at dead, but I hit Gordon. There's a built-in electronic tracer. No signal yet, which probably means they're still underground. I've got relay sensors all over the city. If they come up for air, we'll know. The next day, across the Burnside neighborhood, families and small businesses mysteriously found themselves with large amounts of cash that appeared out of nowhere at their doorsteps. After committing the heist, Two-Face's second act was to spread the stolen money to his home neighborhood. At his underground hideout, Two-Face had Commissioner Gordon handcuffed to a railing while serving him a bottle of wine. Harvey, maybe you should just kill me now. We both know you'll have to sooner or later. I wanted to, but the coin said to let you live. Do you know what was in those armored vans from Lincoln Savings and Loans? Besides the money, documents, under federal subpoena, documents tying Lincoln Savings and Loans to- As Two-Face talked, Gordon accidentally knocked over the bottle of wine. Two-Face rushed to catch it. Jim, that's a 78 Domain du Yak. I'm sorry, Harvey. I do appreciate it. With his captor distracted, Gordon attached the bat knockout dart to 
Two-Face's pant leg. Moments later, over in the Batcave, Alfred saw a blinking light appear on the monitor of the Bat computer. Uh, sir, we've got a live signal traveling quite rapidly, west from the Burnside district, toward Gotham Park. I would assume it's a moving car. If Bourne were loose, he'd head straight for police headquarters. Just so, sir. Perhaps they're transporting him to a new hideout. Or maybe Gordon planted it on somebody else. Such as Mr. Dent? But Bruce was not the only one who heard Alfred. From her own hideout, Selena Kyle had been listening in to the whole conversation from her computer. Somehow, she had found a way to bug the Batcave. Meow. Batman tracked down the tracking device, finding Two-Face coming out of a florist shop. On the ground, Drake scoped out the nearby park and reported to Batman in his communicator. A couple of guys walking a circuit. Same two joggers keep running past. Cops is my guess. Plus, a couple of Mr. Dent's goons in the bush. Whatever's going down stinks. Barbara Gordon sat on a park bench next to her purse. A figure in a parka, holding roses, approached her from behind. Barbara? Harvey? You weren't followed. I'm a cop. I know how to lose a tail. Let me look at you. Don't! I just want to see your sweet face. It's been so long. Are you okay? Does it hurt? I came to tell you. All our dreams of what we could accomplish together, they're coming true. Not quite in the way we expected, but... I believe you, darling. You'll come back from all this. Between the fire, the pain, the drugs, you'll get a slap on the wrist and after that... No, Barbara. That door's closed. You don't understand what I've done. It doesn't matter, Harvey. Barbara suddenly had a gun on Harvey, shifting her tone of voice. You're under arrest. Put one cuff on your wrist and one on the arm of the bench. Everyone on the sidelines watched. Barbara's cops waited for Two-Face to handcuff himself before moving in. While Two-Face's men waited to see what their boss would do next, they were under strict orders not to shoot Barbara. Batman called into Drake. If she takes him in, we have no way of finding Gordon. It's her party. What's the play? Batman had to think quickly. Meanwhile, Barbara kept the gun on Two-Face, feeling conflicted. I love you, Harvey, but I have to bring you in. Barbara, we both know there's no version of reality where you pull that trigger. Oh, I won't shoot to kill, but I'll make real sure you don't run away. She pointed her gun at his leg. Then I guess I should tell you. I have your father. You what?! Just then, Catwoman leaped from a tree and pounced on Barbara, knocking her to the ground. She looked up at Two-Face. Run, you idiot! The cops ran in, firing as Dent ran away. Drake charged in and tracked down Catwoman. She wasn't such an urban legend, after all. Oh, man. Catwoman? You follow Dent. I'll catch up. Batman followed Two-Face as he ran across the street, avoiding speeding cars and trying to reach his hideout. His two sides argued with each other. Traitors. She traitors. Survive, fool. Survive! Finally, Two-Face reached his hideout and his hostage, Commissioner Gordon. What do you expect, Harvey? She's a cop! It's all changed since the accident. I've seen it in the way she looks at me. And my face. Tragedy doesn't change you, Harvey. It reveals you. Maybe she's finally seen what you always were. A spineless opportunist. No real sense of right and wrong. Just a finger in the air to see which way the wind was blowing. 
Now you've got your little coin to tell you what you can and can't do. As if you're not responsible for your own choices. If you weren't such a pitiful weakling, you'd be... Two-Face had spun around, shooting Commissioner Gordon. Happy now, old man. Yes, Harvey. Thank you. You've done me a, a big favor. She loves you. She'd forgive anything. But she'll never forgive you. For this. This audio drama is brought to you by Newverse Creative and features the voice talents of Josh Portillo, Derek Willingham, Angela Heffler, Alexander Pond, Lauren King, Lauren Sanders, Christopher Anderson II, Anthony Williams, Tommy Ricard, and AJ Carter. Narrated by Ben Wan. This audio drama is based on a comic book written by Sam Hamm and was adapted by Ben Wan, directed and edited by Tim Maxwell. If you're a fan of this comic, Check out my podcast, Superhero Stuff You Should Know, where I dove into each issue and interviewed writer Sam Hamm, artist Joe Quinonez, and editor Andy Curry. And if you're a fan of how I adapted this comic for Newverse Creative, check out my short story titled Shortcut to Happily Ever After at Metaphorosis Magazine. You can find the link along with a bunch of my other work at my website, benwanwriter.com. Batman 89, Shadows. Batman was created by Bob Kane with Bill Finger based on characters appearing in DC Comics. <laughs>